May you this day be blessed. Hi there, I'm Sister Catherine Herms and thank you for joining me today as we explore the love that is the heart of the world and the work of the heart that helps us become this love and discover it in the world so that all the world becomes to us like the miraculous burning bush. We have been invisibly stamped with the signature, the seal of the God who bends over us with such tenderness. I call this work of the heart, heart work. Heart work exists because people realize they've come to a place in their life where they, they want spiritual direction. Maybe there are too many options, or maybe there seems to be no options at all. Perhaps they have new eyes to see, or perhaps they're longing for this new sight. Some have touched the sunrise within their soul and want more. Others are longing for this spiritual gift. Sometimes our hearts are filled with nagging questions that run like background music in our life. Do I matter to God? Does God see me? Does God hear me? Does God get what's happening to me and what it means? In heart work, we answer the essential question, who am I now in this situation of my life and in these relationships? To learn more about heart work and what God has led me to do in the world, or just to stay in touch, visit touchingthesunrise.com. How not to become an injustice collector. I'm almost 57, 57 years of people and relationships, situations, issues, reactions, desires, disappointment, dreams, loves. This year on my birthday, I'm making the resolution to not look back. To not look back at disappointment. To not look back at rejection. To not look back at loss. Of course, looking back is important to do at times. I actually began to rediscover parts of my life during the imposed solitude of the pandemic, parts of my life that I hadn't taken the time to integrate precisely because I hadn't looked back. I needed to take the time to, quote, connect the dots, to connect the psychological, emotional, spiritual dots, so to speak, between what I had experienced and lived through and what I was still carrying today in my heart and mind. Making these connections is important. By making connections, we can surrender to God what, what He has helped us recognize. We can let it go. We can understand it more deeply, even recognize where we may have been mistaken in our perception of what happened. When we stop to take a bird's eye view of the context of our life, we discover that for much of our life, we, like everyone else, have had a hard time differentiating between our own emotionalized perceptions and the external world as it actually is. When we have confused our perceptions or opinion with the facts, we put ourselves at the center as the one who knows, the one who is the arbiter, so to speak, of the truth of what really happened. If we are at the center, then then our vision is skewed because what doesn't serve the ego, what doesn't serve me, becomes the enemy. Whether it is a person, a situation, a group, a rule, an event, if I believe that I am at the center, then everything is judged on whether or not it serves me. If it does not turn out to my advantage, it is perceived as an injustice. Of course, we don't say this in so many words, not even in our moments of deepest self-honesty, because it makes us squirm to think that we consider ourselves the center of our universe. Isn't it true, at least sometimes, however, that it puts us in a better position if we can lay the blame for something at another's feet? Quite frankly, every human being since Adam and Eve has had to struggle with this. 
in the garden, they shifted the center of the universe from, from glorifying God to glorifying themselves. And hence the resolution not to look back, not to keep recalling events as explanations of what is happening today, not to nurture grudges, not to hold people's past decisions and mistakes against them, to stop refusing others and myself the grace chance to begin again. It is time to surrender that secret joy that comes from harboring chronic resentment, bringing these resentments up when it's entirely not necessary, covering over instead the past with this blanket of peace. It is time to surrender unrealistic expectations of the world and relationships. It's time to surrender demands of convenience, agreement, approval, popularity. It is time to surrender self-centeredness as a lifestyle. It's time to pray for the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. It is time to to take responsibility for bringing inner self-centered me attitudes to the surface and subordinate them to reason and selfless concern for others. It is time to accept human fallibility and limitation, my own and others, to rejoice in the weaknesses of others, to realize that, that each person works with what they have at any given time. It is time to surrender the seemingly impossible scenarios of the past to God. It is time to give up the addiction to self-righteousness. It is time to choose calm, peace, compromise, forgiveness, and self-control. It is time to embrace dedication humility, gratitude, perseverance, and tolerance. It is time to choose tomorrow over yesterday, a tomorrow that certainly has been shaped by the yesterdays of my life, but even more so by the choices I am making today. On the altar of my heart, I raise my arms in praise and gratitude to you, my King, and I walk in the humble confidence of your merciful compassion. Amen. Sometimes we can feel as though we were lost in a deep forest where no clear paths are visible. A blend of spiritual guidance, mentorship, and counseling, the Heartwork community is a place where you learn to explore, love, open and nourish the paradise of your heart, your deep heart, where God is already dwelling within you. You will discover that though you waited for light to appear from outside, the paths of light are imprinted in your heart where the Trinity abides, and we learn to walk them through the valleys and mountaintops of lived experience. Heartwork is a process of accompaniment that honors your story, creates a space in which you can safely explore what is happening with you, gain the tools to come home to your heart where the Trinity is already at work, be recreated by love, and set out again. To learn more about Heartwork and what God has led me to do in the world, or just to stay in touch, visit touchingthesunrise.com.